Let's talk about Tesla stock. There's been a lot of changes recently, especially with the upcoming earnings report. We'll also touch on volatility, the volatility smile, and historical implied volatility. I'll show you the market forecast and what the options market is indicating. I'll also show you the portfolio and what has changed. Let's start from the beginning. As we can see, after the previous earnings report, Tesla stock rose significantly by 45%. Then we had a fairly long consolidation period of almost two months, and in the past few weeks, the stock has risen again by almost 20%. What could this mean? Is this the beginning of the long-awaited rally, with Tesla heading towards new historical highs, or is it just another rise in the stock followed by another decline? Let's figure it out, but first, let's discuss volatility. As we can see, volatility remains at fairly high levels, around 50% across different expiration dates. This is a common characteristic of options, and as we can see, the further the expiration date, the higher the volatility. Although the usual situation is somewhat the opposite, we will definitely pay attention to this. Now let's look at the volatility smile. As we can see, the volatility smile for nearer expiration dates is skewed towards both increases and decreases in the stock price. In other words, volatility increases both for call options and put options. What does this indicate? This suggests that investors and traders are pricing in both potential increases and decreases in the stock in the near term. This makes sense, especially since the earnings report is coming up soon. As we know, the stock can either rise or fall before the earnings report, and naturally, options and investors are factoring this in. Now let's look at longer expiration dates. As we can see, for longer expiration dates, volatility increases only for put options, meaning only in the direction of a stock decline. This is actually a normal situation because when traders buy stocks, they need to hedge their purchase stocks by buying put options. This is why put options are generally more expensive than call options. Now let's look at historical and implied volatility. As we can see, historical and implied volatility are currently at the same level. Implied volatility is the white line and historical volatility is the gray line. What does this tell us? This is actually a normal situation when the two volatilities match, but unfortunately it doesn't give us a profit opportunity. Let me explain in more detail what I mean. You can trade not only stocks, but also volatility. We can develop strategies for a decline or rise in volatility, but naturally volatility must be traded through options. If we develop such a strategy, it will be easier to manage because we know that volatility always returns to its historical levels. However, since the volatilities are equal, it's hard to profit from this situation, but I will still try to show you how it might look hypothetically. Again, this is all hypothetical. We can use artificial intelligence to help develop a strategy. Let's say we predict that volatility will drop by 15% by August. This is a fairly normal situation since volatility usually falls after earnings reports. Therefore, this forecast is quite realistic. Let's look at one of the strategies proposed by the AI. We are advised to buy one call option with a strike price of $175 and sell two call options with a strike price of $200. This is all for August. This is a fairly complex strategy involving the sale of unequal options at different strike prices. If managed properly, this strategy can be quite effective. It has the potential to generate profit, but it is also very risky. If Tesla suddenly starts to rise sharply, we could incur substantial losses. Again, this strategy, like any other, needs to be managed. I showed it purely to illustrate how volatility can be played. Now, let's look at a very important chart, the levels of support and resistance in the options market. I remind you that these levels are very important. What do we have? As we can see, there is a very large volume centered around the $200 level. Let's take a closer look at it. As we can see, we haven't been able to break through this level yet. We tried several times in late February without success. There was a small attempt in late April. And now in late June, we are trying to break through this level again. If you follow the options and derivatives market, it wouldn't be a surprise to you that Tesla stock is stuck at the $200 level and not going higher. This is due to the significant resistance level for call options. But you might ask, what happens if we break through this level, considering there are almost 500,000 open contracts? That's a lot. The next resistance is at $202.50, at $205. So we have a small step-like pattern here. It's a nearly impenetrable wall. However, the resistance gradually decreases. We see another small spike at $220, and after that, nothing but a void. Hypothetically, if we break these levels, and I must say that breaking them will be extremely difficult, there is no resistance and Tesla stock could start rising significantly. For example, look at what happened in October 2021. We had some resistance levels that were breached on significant news and subsequently the stock rose by 59%, almost 60% in a matter of days. The same principle applies here. Such large resistance levels don't just get broken. 
there would need to be increased trading volumes, possibly driven by news or other information that could boost the stock. After this, Tesla could begin to rise sharply. Let me explain why this is possible and why it happens. When a trader buys stocks or call options, the market maker on the other side is obligated to sell the call option to the trader. The market maker earns from commissions and spreads, not from trading options. Therefore, the market maker must hedge their unlimited risk. When a market maker sells a call option, they must buy the corresponding stock to hedge against potential losses. This is called delta neutral hedging. The more call options that are bought, the more stock the market maker must buy. This creates a significant resistance level. Market makers want to keep the stock below these resistance levels to retain the premium from sold options. Similarly, the same applies to put options, but in the opposite direction. For put options, there isn't as much support. The key levels are around $200 and $195, and we should monitor these levels. Now let's return to Tesla stocks. I'll show you my portfolio and what's happening there. I remind you that I don't know where the stock will go. I can't predict price movements. My main goal is proper position management. I structure positions so that no matter where the stock goes, I make a profit. Let's look at the strategy I developed. If the stock rises to $240, dollars will make around $4,000. If the stock falls to $170, dollars will make $3,500. If we open 10 positions, the profits will be 10 times higher. This is proper position management. If the stock starts to rise, we make money. If it starts to fall, we also make money. The strategy looks like this, but it involves selling options, which carry significant risk. We could incur losses if the stock rises or falls sharply. Managing these strategies involves buying options at the right moment, selling options when necessary, and closing positions as needed. Let's add a note on hedging stocks using a delta neutral strategy. This is complex management, but I want to convey not just a strategy, nor a one-time magical formula, which doesn't exist, but the logic behind it. You need to understand that proper position and capital management is crucial. I've been explaining this in my portfolio, which I manage from scratch, and I've already recorded several videos. There, I explain in great detail what and how I do things. If you grasp the logic of management, you'll be able to make a profit regardless of where the stock or market moves. This is the secret to success. The secret to success isn't about using technical analysis to draw triangles or shapes. The secret is in managing positions properly. Now let's look at the market forecast and what's happening there. Remember, the market incorporates all available information at any given moment news, reports, earnings, and uses mathematics and probability theory to predict where the stock might go and with what probability. Again, this isn't an exact answer but a market assumption. Let's see what the market suggests. The market indicates that the highest probability is that the stock will be between $180 and $0.75, $595 by the end of the summer. This suggests a slight decline, which is the market's forecast for Tesla. But if a new report comes out, the data will change, and of course the market will reassess this information. There's no fixed answer saying the stock will be at a specific price. It's just a market assumption. New information can change this forecast, and this is normal. Understanding this logic helps you manage positions effectively. If we look at the market forecast for the end of the year, say December 2024, the market predicts that the stock will be priced between $175 and $180. This suggests a further decline. In my opinion, this is partly due to the approaching recession, which is likely to hit by the end of the year. We might enter a period of significant turbulence, partly because of high interest rates. In my videos, I explain how to manage a portfolio and avoid losses during a hard landing. Now let's return to my portfolio. Remember, this is a virtual portfolio where I demonstrate the logic of position management. However, I also have a real portfolio, which I have mentioned where you can view it. Currently, I hold only four Tesla shares in my portfolio. Let's look at how I manage positions. I haven't opened many positions, only a few options have expired, which I sold a while ago, earning almost $100 from them. While this isn't a large amount, it demonstrates the concept. My total profit is now almost $1,000. Additionally, I buy shares, and as we can see, my strategy is currently outperforming Tesla's stock. We have an earnings report coming up soon, which we will closely monitor. Right now, things aren't very favorable for Tesla because high interest rates make expensive cars less attractive. However, I believe that electric cars will eventually regain their popularity. In 2020, there was a hype around electric vehicles, and Tesla's stock soared by 1,000%. After this, we've seen a few years of stagnation. I expect something similar to happen with NVIDIA. In 2023, the hype around artificial intelligence caused NVIDIA's stock to rise significantly, but we will eventually reach a peak and then experience stagnation similar to Tesla. Eventually, Tesla will likely begin a new growth phase, 
but this will probably happen after the recession. This is my hypothesis during the recession, the stock might drop, possibly even below $100, but afterward, Tesla could start to reach new historical highs, potentially exceeding $400 and growing by another 100%. If you're a long-term investor and believe in Tesla and Elon Musk, holding onto these shares makes sense. However, be prepared for potential declines in the short term. I caution against holding such volatile stocks with leverage. I generally don't recommend using leverage unless you are a professional who understands how it works. I also recommend watching my previous video where I discuss starting a new portfolio from scratch. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Good luck to everyone.